Okay, um, today I'm going to uh, continue with our Awesome God series, that's what I've been calling it. And we're going through the Bible, we're especially going through the Old Testament, um, and we're looking at some of the incredible things that he has done in people's lives. Today there are uh, three different sections of scripture, because we're going to look at the story of Abraham. And uh, I will read one block of scripture and preach on that, and then another one, and, and then... We should be out of here by four or five. Okay. <laughs> so the first section of scripture is uh, found in Genesis, of course. All of it's from Genesis. Genesis 12, it's in the back of your bulletin, uh, beginning at verse 1. It says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be ble a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and, to, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of earth shall be blessed. Uh, so verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from the country to your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Now last week we looked at the story of Noah. We looked at the story of Noah's ark, and uh, how God looked down, and saw that man was just so completely evil, except for Noah. And so God's plan was to save mankind through Noah, and to save all the peoples of earth. God's plan has not changed here. Uh, even though God is speaking to only one man, you will see that God's plan, or the plan that God had to save all mankind through this one man, is still in effect. Uh, I don't want to jump the gun here, but if we read through the rest of the book, <laughs> the rest of the Bible, you will see how God works through this family to save mankind. This is why Abraham is often called the second Adam. Uh, there are a couple of Jewish folklore sayings that I want to talk about this morning because uh, to me there was always the question... Uh, why did God choose Abraham? That question bothered me. So I did a, lot of, did a lot of research. Why was it so special? And the only real answer I can find is in Jewish folklore. And it's kind of interesting. And I've said this before. Some of you have heard it. But for our guests, um, there's two stories. I'm just going to tell the first one now. I'll tell the other one later. Uh, the first story, um, you may have heard it. The story goes like this. Abraham's father... Tara had a shop where he made and sold idols. And so the story goes that one day uh, he went away and he left Abram in charge of the shop. And Abram got bored and took an axe and chopped up all the little idols, except for the one big one. And he put the axe in the big one's hand. And his father came home and said, What happened? And he said, the big one went crazy and killed all the little ones. And his father said, they can't do that. They're idols. They can't do anything. And Abram's response was, then why do you pray to them? <clears throat> so it's kind of an interesting folklore, right? Um, and it explains to me and explains to the Jewish people uh, why Abram was the one picked. So the story begins with God calling him out of his home, out of his zone, comfort zone, we like to say. Uh, we like to say uh, that this doesn't surprise me. And I don't know if it surprises any of us. Because I know it doesn't surprise me so many times when God has wanted to do something in me or in my life. He has had to pull me out of where I am. And I'm hard-headed. And, and, and sometimes it's taken a lot to get me where he needs me to be. In verse 2 he says, And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I don't know, do you hear the incredible promise that God is making to this man? When God says he's specifically pulled you out of something, and he is going to bless you, and he's going to make you a blessing. And I want you to notice here. God is speaking directly to Abraham. It's not through an interpreter. It's not through an angel. It's not through a dream. It's not. God is speaking to him. And that's a rare thing in the Old Testament. And it's for very special people. 
God is saying he's going to bless Abraham, going to make his name great, and he's going to make him a blessing to other people. Remember my first line, God has a plan. And we already said that that plan was to save mankind. So in verse 3, he says, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of earth shall be blessed. In you all the families of earth. Now get this, God is not only going to bless this man, but he will bless those who bless him. God then goes on to say that those who dishonor you I will curse. Now this is not your normal everyday run-of-the-mill curse. This is God, the God who spoke everything into being. It's that kind of curse. You, you know, I've said there, there's, there's things I want to hear when I get to heaven, right? I, I want, I, my favorite song is, What a day that'll be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day. Glorious day that'll be. That's my favorite song. And there's things that I'd like to hear. And there are things that I don't want to hear. And number one on my don't want to hear list is, who are you? <laughs> Billy Graham. Billy Graham was an amazing preacher, but Billy Graham only had one message. His message was, if I drop dead right now, I know where I'm going. Do you? Can't put it any simpler than that. But Billy figured out how to do it a thousand different ways to say that. But that was always in his message. Sooner or later, the rubber's going to hit the road. Do you know where you're going? And I don't want to be one that is cursed by God. We hear things like, it would, better, it would be better that that man never been born. He would be better to tie a millstone around his neck and throw it in the river. Those, that's, that's some pretty harsh words. God then goes on to say, In you all the families of earth shall be blessed. How does this happen? Jesus Christ himself will come out of this line. That's how. And through Jesus Christ, all nations will be blessed because he will provide a way back to God. The road will not be easy. The climb will be steep. The road will be stained with blood and the price will be oh so high. And Jesus Christ will do it all. We then go to chapter 17 verses 1 through 8 when Abraham was 99 years old the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and multiply you greatly. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make you into a nation. And kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you. And to your offspring after you, the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So Abraham's 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abraham, Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between you me and you, and multiply you greatly. So we pick up the story now. Abraham's 99 years old. When God first called him, he was 75. When God called him out of his land. So if you remember the original call, God said he would make him into the great nation. And here we are 24 years later. And he and Sarah still childless. But he hasn't given up. Abram still is still believing in God's promise. 
And listen to the challenge that God places before Abraham. Walk before me and be blameless. <laughs> That's big. Sometimes we like to think that we don't have a part to play in God's blessing. All right? Uh, we, we like to think that because it's easier that way. But that's not what I read here. God clearly states to Abram that I may make my covenant with you and that I may multiply you. So because uh, that word may is in there twice when he says walk blameless before me, I can't help but think that if you don't, the covenant's not going to be made. And he's not going to be multiplied. I'm going to break it down into simpler terms. My grandfather Ivan, who was a carpenter, he, he was a barn builder. Well, actually, he was, he, was, he was an amazing carpenter, but the thing he did the most was build barns. And he used to have this saying. He used to say it about me a lot. He used to say, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. <laughs> I called him Ivan the Terrible. We had an amazing relationship, him and I. What he was saying was, give me something to work with. Give me something I can work with. And I think that's the best way I can describe what God is saying to Abram. Give me something I can work with. Walk blameless before me. Doesn't mean Abram's perfect. It means he's blameless. Right? So then, verses 3 to 8. See how fast I'm going here? Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of multitude of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make you into a nation, and kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring and after you throughout the gener their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you I will give to you and your offspring after you the land of your I have a hard time with this word sojournings all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God so after God challenges him and says give me something to work with Abram must be doing the right thing because God must have seen it, and He did it. Because He makes His covenant right away with Abram. Do you see the promise? My covenant is with you, and shall, you shall be the father of all nations. There's the covenant. Now remember, Abram and Sarah are still childless. Abram is 99 years old. Sarah is 90. And I don't know about you, but this sounds quite ridiculous to me. But here's the second part of that Jewish folklore I was talking about. Back in Genesis, when God created man from the dust and he breathed the breath of life into him, it is called roha. Jewish say that when God breathed on man, he gave him uh, the breath of life and it made a sound of H. Roha. And so... This, they believe, is why God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. He breathed the breath of life into him. And he breathed the breath of generations into him. Interesting, eh? God continues to describe the promise Abra to Abram, Abraham that he will make with, into the nations. And kings shall come from him. Well, the king of kings shall come from him. The Lord of lords shall come from him. The covenant does not end with Abraham, but it is an everlasting covenant. God's promise to be near to him. God then promises the land of Canaan to them, an everlasting possession. And with those people also will I be their God, he says. Pretty amazing. We now move on to Genesis 17, 15 to 19. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarah, Sarai, but Sarah 
shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall be, and she shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. And he said to him, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And a Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I think I went too far, but whatever. So God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, she will not be called Sarai, but she will be called Sarah. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. You see, that there, was, there was a little movement going on here. We're going to get into it about, about Ishmael and all this. The promise was made to Abraham that him and Sarah would have a child. The Jewish folklore comes into play again in Sarai's life, because now it's not Sarai, but it's Sarah, with an H on the end. Because Sarah's 90 years old, it's about, and about to become a mom. All things are possible with God. The covenant promise that God gave to Abraham, He now gives to Sarah, his wife, and it is for generations, just like the promise he gave to Abraham. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to him, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? We hear this and we say, Oh, how dare he, how dare Abraham laugh in the face of God in his promise? Well, get off your high horse. Think about it. Think about what has been told to him. Think about who he is and how old he is and how impossible this is. You see, I had the opportunity as to work as a nurse in a long-term care facility, right? Long-term care, basically it's for old people. Like most of the people there were over 80 years old. 90% of the people in the home were women. And we never had to deal with one pregnancy. <laughs> We had the medical supply kits and, and, and the pharmacy. We had our own pharmacy in the building and you had to have the key. And the, if you were the nurse, you had the narcotics key and you go there and you open it up and the, there was no home pregnancy test. <laughs> so Abraham laughed. And Sarah laughed when she heard about it. Lot, the nephew... He laughed when he heard about it. Everyone who hears about it laughs. And if you were there, you would laugh too. Think about it. If your mom called you, and she was 90 and said, guess what? You're going to be a big sister. <laughs> You're laughing. And Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, no. But Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. God's response to Abraham's laughter is quite funny. Abraham mentions Ishmael. And we know the story of Ishmael. Ishmael was the son that was born of Hannah, who was a maidservant to Sarah. Sarah said, we're going to have kids. I can't have kids. They all considered that Sarah was barren. But I have this maidservant. And so you sleep with her and have a child with her and that will be our child. We will adopt it. And so Ishmael is born. So what is God really saying to Abraham? I don't need your help. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it in you and I'm going to do it through you. And through this, I'm going to show the world my love. God's awesome power, God's awesome love is revealed through the birth of this child. Not just any child, but a child to Abraham and Sarah when they are very, very old. This is not just for Abraham. This is not just for Sarah. This is not just for Isaac. 
This was just the beginning of something so much bigger. This was the beginning of the road to freedom for all mankind and for all nations. And that's just awesome. And I know, I know that God has a sense of humor. Because do you know what the name Isaac means? He laughs. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Abraham laughs in the face of God and God says, oh, you're going to name him. He laughs. <laughs> God's awesomeness is revealed through the birth of a son. He laughs. And he says, you ain't seen nothing yet. God is going to redeem mankind through this family. God is birthing a nation here. And we don't even see it. And it's going to come to play. We're, we're going to continue on with our awesome God series. And I want you to remember where this family comes from. I want you to be able to trace the line through this. There is a book that I have mentioned several times. And if you ever find it, it's an older book. You can maybe get it on one of those used book websites and stuff like that called The Miracle of the Scarlet Thread. And it traces this family line through the Bible. And it starts with this. And it is an amazing story. Let's stand.